In this video, I want to show you how we can join our census data that we downloaded to our census tract shapefile in GIS. The first thing you want to do is go Add Data. Simply click on the Add button, navigate to your folder, and find your Excel file. Now, we can't actually add the Excel file. What we want to do is add the sheet inside of it. To do that, simply double click on that Excel file, highlight that sheet, and hit Add. I'm going to go ahead and right click and open that so we can see it. Here's all the variables that we downloaded, and here's that join ID variable, unique identifying number for each census tract in the United States. That number is going to correspond to a number in the existing shapefile. Let me go ahead and open up the attribute table for our census tract shapefile. You can see that we've got a GeoID variable that looks exactly like our join ID values. And what that is, is it's based on the state FIPS for that tract, in this case Colorado is 08, the county that that tract is in, and then a tract number. And then based on all of those values combined, you get a unique identifying number. Here it's labeled GeoID. In other boundary files, it might appear as FIPS. Now one of the issues that you're going to run into is that when you download data from the Census Bureau website, that your join ID is actually going to be in numerical format, whereas this GeoID or FIPS is going to typically be in a text format. So one of the things you'll want to do first is go ahead and add a field here. We're going to call this, let's just call it FIPS. And if you already had a FIPS variable, you might call it FIPS2. And I'm going to select double and hit OK. Now again, it really doesn't matter what you call this. You really just give it a name that you know what it refers to. Now I'm going to click on that column to highlight it, right click and select Field Calculator. And that FIPS is going to equal the GeoID, but it's going to be a number. So let's hit OK. So you can see that it simply replicated GeoID, but this is a numerical format. So now I can close my attribute table for my Denver tracks and I'm ready to join the data together. Now what you always want to do is you want to join your census data to your shapefile. So to do that, you want to right click on your shapefile. It's a common mistake for people to right click on their census data sheet and try to join the shapefile to it. That's the wrong way. So right click on your shapefile, go to Joins and Relates, Join. We're going to join attributes from another table. It's already reading my census sheet. If you had multiple sheets in there, you might have to select the right one. In the number one field, you'll want to select FIPS, or whatever you call it, maybe FIPS2. And you'll notice that it already recognizes that join ID is the, rec the correct corresponding number. Go ahead and hit OK. It's a little anticlimactic, but if I open up my attribute table again, you'll see there's all my variables have been added to the attribute table of my shapefile. Go ahead and close that. Now one of the things I always recommend people doing, and it's not always necessary, but it's always a, a safe thing to do, is simply right click on your shapefile at this point, data and export data. And what this does is it exports the shapefile on itself, but in the process it hardens that census join. So I'm just going to call mine Dentrax2 in this case. The reason you do that is if you were to spatially join data later on based on a spatial location, which you'll see in another video, that that process can um, remove um, all of your census data that were, was joined here um, or turn it all to null. And you don't want that to happen. So simply replicating it on itself or exporting it on itself you're able to sort of harden that, um, that join of census data. So that's how you join census data. I hope you find that uh, useful.